I want you to grab a snack because we're going to talk about the digestive system now and it might be helpful to be digesting while you're learning about what's actually happening. So there are five main actions that are occurring um, during digestion and digestion is one of those. So if we think about what the digestive system, what its goal is, is to accomplish these five things. Movement, secretion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. So I want you to keep in mind that a lot of these actions are occurring at multiple points throughout your digestive system, um, particularly movement because the food has to move all the way through. So let's talk quickly about each one of those. So movement is what's actually propelling the food through your digestive system from where it goes in to where eventually all of the waste comes out. Um, secretion <clears throat> excuse me, is when all of the things, digestive juices, okay, so things like saliva and then things in your stomach, etc., get released to help um, digest the food, and that's in response to a stimulus. So that's one way that your nervous system is involved. Okay. Digestion, what we normally think of as, you know, digestion, is the breakdown of food. Okay. So the food that you eat, obviously, is very large, and then it has to be broken down into very small molecules that can then cross the plasma membrane and get absorbed. So that's our fourth thing, absorption. And that's when the those small molecules that have been broken down within your digestive system get absorbed um, from kind of the big tube that makes up your digestive system, which is called the alimentary canal, into your cells. And then finally there is elimination, getting rid of everything that was not digested um, and waste materials that your body cannot use. We want to get those out of your body. When we think about digestion, it can really happen in two ways. So I want you to imagine, you know, these sugar cubes right here. We need to break those down into smaller parts. There are two main ways we could do that. We could use a hammer right here, okay, and that would be like mechanical digestion. Okay. So smashing up those um, larger molecules into smaller and smaller molecules. The other thing that we could do is we could pour something on there, like acid. I mean, sugar will even dissolve in water, but some sort of chemical, okay, so that's chemical digestion, that would help to break down those sugar molecules into smaller and smaller parts. So this happens right away in your mouth, right? Because you think about your teeth are breaking down using mechanical digestion to break down the food, and then all of the saliva, which contains salivary amylase, which is produced, is also helping to break down the food. So we're going to talk about kind of all the different parts of our digestive systems in just a moment, but first I want you to look at some other animals' digestive systems. What I want you to focus on is how all of these digestive systems are basically a tube within a tube, okay? So we have that tube, which is called the alimentary canal. And we can see that in this nematode up here. So all the food goes in the mouth, gets digested and absorbed in the intestine, and it all comes out through the anus. Okay? Then if we look at an earthworm, okay, so a nematode is a little roundworm. Earthworms, you've seen these in your backyard. A little bit more complex, but all the food goes in, gets broken down, digested, absorbed, and then the waste comes out. Same thing with the snail. Food goes in. It's absorbed. Now we have a liver. We'll talk about what the liver does. Travels through a little bit more of a curvy path and comes out. Cockroach. So a little basic insect. Same thing. The path is becoming a little more convoluted. Gives the body a little bit more time to absorb nutrients and better break them down. But then it all comes out. Here's a rabbit. You can see a lot of the um, organs that a rabbit has. Very similar to our own. They're a mammal, just like we are. So... Food travels through that alimentary canal right, into your stomach. Liver is going to play a role into the small intestines, into the large intestines, and then eventually all the waste is eliminated. So let's talk about what we actually have. All right, so where it all starts, of course, is your mouth. Mouth is responsible for chewing the mechanical breakdown of the food, right? Your teeth, your tongue even helps with that a little bit. Okay. Related to that is the pharynx. Okay. Pharynx is located kind of the, just behind your mouth, upper part of your throat, if you will. And that releases this enzyme, salivary amylase. 
which is saliva, um, which is responsible for the chemical breakdown of food. And that's a response to a stimulus. Then food travels down the esophagus, which is basically responsible for connecting your mouth to the rest of your digestive system into your stomach. The movement that is responsible for getting all of the food from your mouth and all the way through your digestive system is known as peristalsis. Peristalsis. Um, and then, so food travels down your esophagus, it goes through a little sphincter, and then into your stomach, which is probably when you think about your digestive system, the first thing that comes to mind is your stomach. So that is where food might be stored for a little bit. Um, your stomach is also be responsible for some of that digestion. It helps to break down the food using gastric juices, which work best, let's add in here, at a low or acidic pH. And from your stomach, after it gets digested a little bit more, the food, or what was once food, it's not looking so much like food anymore, goes through another sphincter, which is a little circular muscle, which controls openings, um, into the small intestines. So your small intestines, it's the final place for digestion. Okay, so the last time that food is actually broken down. And there are three organs, which are kind of called accessory organs, because the food does not actually travel through these. They're not part of the alimentary canal, but they play very important roles in digestion. Okay. There's the pancreas. The pancreas is responsible for releasing digestive juices or pancreatic juices that help to break down fats or lipids and proteins. Okay. Then there is the liver. The liver releases bile. Bile helps your body to absorb fats. Um, another function that your liver has is it filters out waste. We'll talk about that when we talk about the circulatory system. And then you have the gallbladder. The gallbladder, right next to the liver, and it helps to store bile um, that the liver produces. So you might know someone, maybe you yourself have had your gallbladder removed. That's possible because um, then they just, you lose that storage place for the bile, but the liver is what's actually producing the bile. So food travels through your small intestine, which are very, very, very long, to help to give the body more time to digest food. And the small intestines are also going to be responsible for starting to absorb, take in a lot of those nutrients. Okay, so that's where we're getting that absorption step is finally coming in. Then the food travels to your large intestines, which are called that because they're wider in diameter. And this is where water, salts, and vitamins are going to be absorbed. Okay, so carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, those are being absorbed in the small intestines after they've been broken down. Your large intestines... Everything else starts to get absorbed. We'll talk about what happens when, you know, water isn't being absorbed quickly enough. Um, and then eventually it all goes to your rectum. Oh, and I skipped over colon. You may have heard of colon before. That's the last place, kind of the end of your large intestines, last place where water can be absorbed. And then the rectum is basically where everything is stored until it's eliminated from your body because you wouldn't want to be just eliminating food as you're done with it. You want to be able to have that happen at certain periods of time. So if we were to follow this, if food goes into your mouth, mechanical digestion starts with your teeth and your tongue, pharynx releases that salivary amylase, and then your tongue pushes that food, which is actually called a bolus now, down into your esophagus. Peristalsis is helping to move it into the stomach. Low pH gastric juices, helping to digest that food, break it down further. And then the food travels into the small intestines where the liver and the pancreas, which you can't see here, and the gallbladder are releasing all those things to help to break down and store the proteins and the fats. Travels all the way through the small intestines. This right here, that's your appendix. Remember one of those vestigial organs that has no function. Um, from small intestines, totally broken down now. Nutrients are being absorbed, goes into the large intestines. Water, salts, vitamins are being absorbed. Travels down to the colon, last place to absorb water. And then it's going to hang out here until you're ready to get rid of it. So that's your digestive system. We're going to talk a lot more about what actually is happening here.